in his career. And again, four times by fighters that consider themselves prospects the same way as Witherspoon considers himself. Average punches landed. We update this statistic and show you Witherspoon the last four rounds. Now up to 44 punches per round landed. Low starter with his spin. Only landed 10 punches in that opening round. Much was the case in his last fight also. Short right hand to the side of the head. for the uppercut still exists for Witherspoon. As Jenkins, you can see, bearing his head forward. Separates with a right hand. Like we always talk about the styles. The physical styles of a fighter. But never forget that the mental style of the fight is attached to the physical style, what that physical style will represent itself as in the ring. And the mental style or the mental sort of design, if you will, of Witherspoon is, again, to think a lot, to be thoughtful, and to be careful. And therefore, style is going to follow in suit. Jenkins willing to work. Witherspoon punches right along with him, snaps his head back with a jab. And now puts a flurry on the inside. They separate with right hands. Comes in with a surging left hook. Good combination there. No one-two by Witherspoon. And now thudding shots to the head from Chaz. And again, Chaz showing that good brain, that good mind, that good vision. Taking little steps back and creating the holes for these punches. Allowing his opponent to fall into them. You like the way Witherspoon thinks on his feet in there. Doesn't let himself get smothered. Takes that little step back when he has to. Good last minute of this ninth round by Chaz Witherspoon. Talking about how smart Witherspoon is. Well, look, he steps back, creates room, then comes in, picks up the punches. And as Jenkins tries to smother him, what's he do? He finds room along the ropes to step back and keep those hands moving. Tenth and final round of our heavyweight co-feature. In the last two rounds, Chaz Witherspoon outlanded Jenkins 97 to 36 overall, and 88 of those were to the head. Let's look at the punch track numbers, the headshots. The average headshots landed the last three rounds. You see a 43 to 16 differential for the unbeaten 26-year-old Chaz Witherspoon. the guard with the right hand and came around that left guard. And you know, what I've been saying that Witherspoon is smart, that he's a guy that is careful, that's not negative. That's not a knock on him. That's a fact, and that's part of his style, and that's part of what you can expect. Now, that will serve him. It will work into punches. He'll be thinking out there. He'll be navigating himself out there the way that you're supposed to when you're in front of somebody that can hurt you. But where it can cost him a little bit is in getting the audience excited and getting people to say, hey, you know, this guy really thinks bond burns. That will cost him a little bit there, and sometimes, maybe when he has an opportunity, when he has a guy hurt, instead of going in for the kill, he might play it safe and let a guy survive. And who knows how that will play out as he stepped up in the boxing ladder. In the division that is thirsting for good young American prospects, the opportunities exist. See how he navigates himself around there with his spoon? Took a little step back, Joe, took his right hand, and he moved the left elbow of Jenkins to turn him. And 
right there. He turns, gets a nice little angle, and now all of a sudden he's in a big part of the ring where he has plenty of room. Jenkins is losing his pants here. And Jenkins is losing his pants and getting trapped on the ropes. That's a double whammy. He's going to put on a show for the crowd. And watch how Witherspoon never allows himself to stay on those ropes long enough for his opponent to take advantage. Watch, he's coming near the ropes now. I guarantee you Witherspoon will move off. And he does. Now, at a certain point, those trunks go low enough. The safety of the fighter actually becomes an issue. You don't want a fighter tripping over himself. And referee Earl Brown can always take a moment to pause things and fix those trunks. Final 20 seconds here. And we're just glad to see this 10th round coming to an end before we see the end. Glad to see he's got another layer. Chaz Witherspoon going to bring it home. Teddy has said he should get rid of this guy. Not happening. Jenkins firing right to the final bell. So we will come back and hear from the judges. Chaz Witherspoon looking for win number 23. Stay with us. More Wednesday night fights from New York when we come back. Next Wednesday, April 23rd, a good one from South Florida. We showcase hard-hitting former titleist Juan Urango against Argentina's Carlos Vilches. ESPN, your boxing authority. This is a top dollar fundraiser tonight here in Midtown Manhattan. You see some of the sports memorabilia, including a beautiful black and white, a thriller in Manila, and a signed Joe Namath jersey. And it is home to Wednesday night fights this week. The Hammerstein Ballroom is. Well, let's wrap up Dominic Jenkins and Chaz Witherspoon. A look at the Just for Men hair color punch track fight recap. And Witherspoon worked well down the stretch. In fact, in the final round, as you look at his headshot numbers that were impressive, he landed 60 total punches, his high total for the fight. Teddy Atlas's scorecard early on, Jenkins took round two and three, but then Witherspoon took over, and thus a final tally on Teddy's scorecard that reads 98-92. Well, let's hear what the ringside judges had to say, and for that, we send it up to the ring to the generous one, Joe Antonacci. Boxing fans, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Bob Gilson scores the bout. 98-91. Judge Tom Kazmarek scores it 97-93. And Judge Julie Letterman sees it 96-93. All for your winner by unanimous decision from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the gentleman, Chaz Witherspoon. Jazz Witherspoon now 23-0, but obviously still work to be done in his career.